If purchasing prices stayed constant all the time, the calculation of cogs and inventory would have been much simpler. But unfortunately, that's not how things work in reality. Prices of raw materials, labor, and other costs change all the time. So that's a topic to be addressed when we calculate cogs and inventory. Let's provide an easy to understand example. You own a shop selling fruits and vegetables. On Monday, your supplier brings in bananas that cost $1.50 per pound. And on Thursday, he comes in and tells you they have received a new shipment and he can sell you bananas at $1.3. That's a great deal. So you agree, even though you still have bananas that cost $1.5 in your warehouse. Okay, what happens when a client buys bananas from you on Friday and you have both $1.50 and $1.30 bananas in your warehouse? What is the cost of these bananas? Well, as usual, the short answer is it depends. It depends on the cost flow method our firm has decided to use, the mechanism the company uses to decide which is the cost of the products it sells, whether the cost is $1.50, $1.30, or something else in our example. According to the International Financial Reporting Standards, companies can choose between three cost flow methods. Specific identification, first in, first out, weighted average cost. The main difference between IFRS and US GAAP is that US GAAP allows a fourth cost flow method, last in, first out. Okay, let's describe each of the four cost flow methods to understand them better. Specific identification consists of matching each unit sold with its actual price. This is a method that is appropriate for businesses in which products are not interchangeable. If a firm sells paintings, specific identification is more appropriate than any other method. In our banana example, specific identification isn't unfitting because the first batch of bananas was delivered three days earlier, and the fruits are more mature than the ones delivered on Thursday. Most people don't like green bananas, so it might make sense to distinguish bananas delivered on Monday and use the $1.50 cost for them. Okay, excellent. The next method we'll study is the first-in, first-out method, also known as FIFO, where the first item purchased is assumed to be the first item sold. In our case, the company bought $1.50 bananas first, and then $1.30 bananas. So, until $1.50 bananas have been sold, we will use $1.50 as the cost of bananas we are selling. Once the bananas delivered on Monday have been sold out to customers, we'll be ready to use $1.30 as our cost. Makes sense, right? The other method, last in, first out, which is not allowed under IFRS, assumes the opposite principle. The first products going out of our stock are the last that came in. In our case, $1.30 bananas go out first. The rationale behind this principle, known as LIFO, is that COGS actually reflects the latest market price available. However, the issue is that if the price of items fluctuates significantly, we can have strange inventory values, as the first items that have entered our inventory have been there for some time and are registered at a price that is now misrepresentative. Great. Finally, according to the fourth cost flow principle, companies can choose the weighted average cost method which consists of dividing the total cost of goods available for sale by the quantity available for sale. And this gives us unitary cogs of the product we are about to sell. The result is a value between FIFO and LIFO. Okay, very well. These are the main cost flow methods companies use. Now we are ready for a practical exercise in which we can see how each method impacts the inventory and cogs value when prices change. Are you up for the challenge? Great. It's in our next video.